Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about quite an interesting problem or the attacks or the vulnerability or the threat you can say. So this is about the confused deputy problem. Uh, now not a lot of people knows about this but this is very interesting and sometimes you get mixed it up with the privilege escalation. So today we're going to see what is the confused deputy problem is. Uh, we'll see a couple examples and we'll also compare with the privilege escalation and what are the typical attacks that could classify as a confused deputy problem. So first of all, uh, what's the deputy? So the deputy is the program which takes action on behalf of the other programs or people, right? So for example, uh, you ask your uh, father to take some action so your father is now a deputy so be uh, behalf of you your father is taking some action now what's the confused deputy is the program which has permission given to it for one purpose so you ask your father to do X and applies those permission for some other purpose now your father does Y because he has permission to do that and this is contrary to the original intent of the permission and therefore allows something that it shouldn't. So uh, your father shouldn't do Y because you only asked them to do X, but because he has permission, he did that. Now, we'll, we'll take a look at the example, so probably that will uh, help you guys understand what the confused deputy problem is. And don't worry if this definition doesn't make sense to you right now. And after a couple of examples, I'll also give you an answer why this is different than the privilege escalation. So let's take a look at the example, right? So we have uh, one user, uh, let's say there is a deputy, which is a program or the middle middleman or middleware or something which has the super admin rights. Then we have the application, API or server, and then we have the database. Now assume uh, the user makes a request like an update profile. The deputy has all the rights, so it evaluates the user request. It sends it to the application to update the profile, let's say changing the first name. And the application server indeed calls to the database and of course update the records accordingly. And gives back the 200 OK response to the user. OK, this is the legitimate scenario, right? Now let's say there is an admin and it says delete profile. Of course, uh, deputy has that permission of doing that. Uh, so it goes back to the application again. Uh, it goes back to database. It deletes the profile, and that's fine too. Now, the confused deputy would be a problem when the user has an update profile. Instead of calling the update profile, it calls the delete profile. Now, what should happen uh, in the, I guess, real world is the deputy uh, we'll check the user request, and when it passes to the application, the deputy should pass what the request is, which is delete profile, and where the request is coming from, like does the user has permission to delete the profile. And then the application will evaluate the uh, both the things and then do the operation, whether to delete the profile or not. Now instead, what happening is, the deputy will only make a request to the application to delete the profile. Now, since the application uh, sees the request came from the deputy, which has a super admin rights, it's going to go ahead and delete the profile. Right? So that, that's the confused deputy. Now, another example uh, involves is the program, let's say, that needed write access to its licensing information. So there is a program which require write access to the like you know licensing information which is stored in the database so it can track the usage now the problem comes when the user accidentally asks the program to remove the content of a folder that happened to contain the licensing information now the program should not have done that but had the permission to do it so the program did that so instead of deputy let's say there is a program and, and which has all the permission, right? Now let's take a look at another example. So we have this client OS service. So the client is uh, assume you are the client, like you are, you are your Windows or Mac users, and you are the user of that OS. So that's why you're the client. 
and what this service is supposed to do is let me just get all the okay yeah so what this client does is it asks command to the OS that yeah calculate bill and then the service apparently does that cal calculates the bill and, and give the output as this document right and what the malicious client can do is it can ask delete the bill now as a user you do not have permission on that folder to delete the bill but the operating system has this permission right so it when it will call the service it will pass its own credentials which of course includes that it has access to calculate as well as delete the bill information so it's going to delete the bill so now whenever program tries to access the file the operating system need to know two things which file the program is asking for and whether the program has permission to access the file so in this case like the OS need to determine uh, when it's sending requests back to the service whether this client has a permission to delete the bill or not now if it's not sending that permission along with the request the service has no way to determine whether the client should have access or sh whether it should carry out the operation or not so in this example the file is designated by its name bill as we said like you know uh, this is the file and the server receives the file name from the client but does not know whether the client had permission to write the file and when the server opens the file the system uses the server's permission which is or we can say OS permission and not the client so when the file name was passed from the client to the OS and the permission did not go along with it the permission was increased by the system silently so here the privilege of the client was increased or upgraded silently without anyone noticing it because when the the call, the service is being called it's passing the OS credential instead of client's credential now we'll see some attacks uh, that will possibly you know clarify some of your questions and and why this is a vulnerability and all those things right but generally people say this uh, that like you know this happens because the application had a security hole or was poorly coded like a privilege escalation vulnerability however when constant vigilance becomes necessary to keep things from going on it is good to find a more fundamental cause right so in this case a more cause the fundamental or the root cause was that no direct connection is maintained between what the application does and why it has permission to do that so in the privilege escalation, we see that if the user uh, calls, let's say, uh, update profile API, and then the server validates whether the user has that permission or not, and then uh, it whether updates the profile or denies the request based on the permission. Now, the privilege escalation vulnerability will happen if the user is able to call delete profile and the server is not validating the permission in our scenario the service is validating the permission the only problem here is the p permission that it's validating it's not the client's permission it's actually OS permission so whenever there is a middleman between the client and the server we need to, or there is a program which kind of facilitate the request from the user or the client this is very important so pay attention to that if there is any program in between the server and the client which facilitated the request now that middleman or the program would should not use his or own like you know permission to make a request further to the server rather it should do either use like you know client permission and pass that along to the server or it should verify whether the client has permission to the request that he has made before forwarding it to the server so that's why like you know that's when this problem occurs now you won't find this problem all the time but this is very common to this system when you are you are using some program uh, to make a request uh, like you know to another program and, and things like that now what are the practical attacks in today's scenario uh, one of the top of the list is CSRF 
So CSRF is one of the attack that one can do using the Confused Deputy because uh, it's an like you know, it uses the web browser. And now a web browser, you consider this as a deputy. So you are the user. Web browser is your deputy, and and then the, of course whatever the application that you're accessing through the web browser is the application or the server. So it uses the web browser to perform sensitive actions against the web application. Now, common form of this attack occurs when a web application uses a cookie to authenticate all the requests transmitted by a browser. Uh, using a JavaScript, an attacker can force the browser into transmitting authenticated HTTP request. So when this, uh, I'm not going to go deep into what the CSRF is. We already have discussed uh, in one of our previous videos. But what essentially it is, uh, when you are as a victim accessing certain things on the browser, some attacker sends you the link, you click on that link, it's going to open up in the browser. Now, browser will not realize whether the request is coming from you or the malicious attacker. So it's going to send it to the server anyway, and where you are already authenticated, and it's going to get processed. So that's where the confused deputy, like the in our case, this is a browser, right? Now, another similar example is click checking. So the click checking is an attack where the user acts as a confused deputy. In this attack, a user thinks that they are browsing a website. Of course, it's an attacker controlled website, but they are in fact tricked into performing sensitive actions on another website. Right? Now, a, a good example or another, I guess, classic example is the personal firewall software. Now, what firewall does is simple, like it, it blocks or denies the access to certain websites based on rules that, that are set up either by admin or by you. So it can restrict the internet access for specific application, right? So if you want, for example, we are just going to take some example. Let's say you do not want a world to open xyz.com, right? And that the rule has been set up into the firewall. Now, what Word can do, it can circumvent this by starting a browser with instruction to access xyz.com. Now, of course, the browser has the authority to open a network connection, even though the application does not. So firewall software can attempt to address this by prompting the user in cases where one program starts another, which then accesses the network, or in our case, xyz.com. So here's the problem, right? So in this scenario, of course, firewall didn't want user to access that, but and oh, sorry, the word the word application was not allowed to access xyz.com. But then what browser uh, what word did is it opened up the browser and and asked browser to open that application or the website. And there was no such rule in the firewall, so it allowed it. So indirectly, Word was able to access xyz.com while it should it should have not. So, however, the user frequently does not have sufficient information to determine whether such access is legitimate. False positives are common, and there is substantial risk that even sophisticated user will become habituated to clicking OK to these prompts. So what we are saying is, let's say firewall should prompt user, oh, this is a dangerous activity, are you sure you want to do it? Now many times if we are in a rush or something, we just click OK and get rid of it. So like this is not a good control, but that's something the firewall should be doing. Now not everything is confused deputy. So not every program that misuses the authority is a confused deputy. This is also something very important to know. Sometimes misuse of authority is simply a result of a program error. So the confused deputy problem occurs when designation of an object is passed from one program to another and the associated permission changes unintentionally without any explicit action by either party. Right? As we saw, like if the privileges are gets upgraded without any actions then it's a it's a program error. It is insidious because neither party did anything explicit to change the authority. 
Now, what could be the mitigation? Uh, of course, for the CSRF, as we saw, like if you are building a web-based application, ensure that you are building a mechanism that prevent attacker from taking legitimate users into making requests to your service. For web-based application, use CSRF protect protection such as anti-CSRF token or double submit cookie to prevent confused deputy problem. And of course, the general mitigation for this problem is ensure that you are validating that the customer making the request does in fact have permission for the resource that they are telling your service to access on their behalf. So as we said earlier, either the middleman or the deputy has to validate the permission and accept or deny the request, or it should pass along the permission the client's permission or the user's permission along with the request so server can validate the permission so that's that's the uh, i guess the core part of where the confused deputy problem arise and and how do you how one should resolve it so i hope like you know uh, you have liked this video and and this was a bit different topic which i wanted to cover so i hope you guys like it and, and hit the like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe to my channel for weekly episodes. Do not forget to follow on Facebook. Uh, link is in the description. And thank you for your time. I'll see you guys next week.